Pizza Hut, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to order a pizza. What? You don't deliver to camp? <laughs> well, folks, we didn't need them to deliver anyway. I'm talking about the best pizza crust ever. We're going to show you how to put it together with a homemade sauce. Come on. Hey, thank y'all for stopping by camp on a beautiful day it is. And let me tell you, if you're a first time viewer, hey, let me open them arms. We just welcome you in here. This is a place to where we can all come and just share some laughter, talk about some food, some good times, cause we cover it all. Cooking outside, converting all them outsides to inside in the oven. But folks, just come on in, grab a chair, sit down. This is a place where we can relax. So what are we talking about today? Pizza. <laughs> Shan is the connoisseur of all pizzas, and she does love a pizza. I do. Now, folks, I'm going to tell you right now, I know that pizza is about the crust. That's what it's all about to me. Not so much the toppings, but I ain't getting crazy, Shan. I ain't going out there and putting a bunch of vegetables on something. We're going to cover mine up with meat we are here in a minute. But, folks, I'm talking about the best crust ever. It's really easy. Takes a little time, but it's so much worth the effort. Now, folks, we're going to be putting two of them together today. This recipe will make four, but you can put them in the ice box, them other two to share with friends. And we're making my ever popular, oh, I love it so much, meat lovers pizza. But Shan is here. Yes, she is, and I love her so much, I do. And she wants a margarita pizza. I ain't got no tequila. But she said it's not like that. It is tomato and basil. Whew, it does look pretty. It does smell good. So let's get started with this crust. Now, the first thing we're going to have to work on is we're going to need a cup and a third of warm water. Always check the date wherever it is somewhere here and then get your magnifying glasses out. This says expires November 39th, 2054. So I know this is some really good stuff. So we're going to use two packets. Yep, you heard me. Now, folks, I got to give a little shout out here to my good friend, Joe Jones, because he is the pizza king over in Wellington, Texas. He is, and he makes some of that best crust. He let me borrow some of his ideals for this pizza, but I sort of changed it up a little. I'm adding more yeast, and we're doing a longer rise. So yeast first, then we're going to go some sugar, okay? About two teaspoons, which is about that much. Stir this up really well. Proofing the yeast is make sure that the yeast is active, that it is good, that it's going to do its job and get that rising to go and make that dough bloom. I mean, just get bigger and bigger. You're going to see a little bubbling and little stuff fermenting there and coming up, and it's just going to sort of start to grow just a little in there by bubbles. Ever so gently, we're going to set this right here, and we're going to get four cups of all-purpose flour. Now, the recipe will tell you four to five cups, and you're gonna need that last cup for sprinkling as we go along making this. But we got our flour here, and you notice this salt is out here. Never put salt in there with that yeast and sugar because it's just gonna defeat our purpose. Now we're gonna put about two teaspoons in there, which is that much. I love me some onion powder, and we're gonna go and use about a tablespoon, which is that much, because one- I guess I am sure. <laughs> I had a guy not long ago and say, oh no, Ken has done broke down and used a measuring spoon. One of them videos I did, so mm -mm, I'm going back to the old ways. Italian seasoning. Now we're gonna use two tablespoons. So we've got our dry in here. I need you to go ahead and mix all that together. And folks, I ain't telling you, you can't be adding like some garlic powder in here, any kind of everything you might want, some red pepper flakes, whatever you need, mix it on in here but make sure you got that onion powder and that Italian seasoning in there. Our yeast did proof. You've seen it bubble up there, you did. And we're gonna give it a little whisking around. Make you a little whale well there in the bottom. Go ahead and pour it right on in there. And it's already smelling like pizza to me. Mm, that is gonna be some goodness. To that, a third of a cup of olive oil. Y'all remember her, Popeye's girlfriend she was. Great person. Now then, we are gonna stir. And I just want you to get all this incorporated and then we're going to get our hands in it and we're going to, what, make some dough. We sure are. You might flour your hands just to tie it, then just go to working it to where we can form all this into 
some type of a round figure, not a trapezoid. So, let me get rid of this somewhere. Get you a, and this is where it is very important. Folks, we are gonna need this for 10 minutes. Yep, you heard me right. That's what makes a great pizza dough. Now, when you keep working this, I want you to stretch it, roll it back, stretch it, roll it back. We have needed for 10 minutes my arthritis and my shoulder C. And you can see, you don't want that too sticky. It is just right. We didn't have to add hardly much flour back to our board. But I want you to just make it sort of in one of them mushroom dome-like shapes. Grease that same bowl you took it out of. That way you don't have to wash so many dishes. And I like to rub me a little coating on here just on the top. And I'm not telling everybody that, but I'm telling y'all. So we got her in the bowl. I want you to cover it. Now, I like to let it rise four. You can do this for three. It is gonna come to the top. I mean, gonna be plumb full. Then I want you to take it out, punch it down, and I want you to knead it. I need you to take it and just take your hands and just roll it. Stretch that dough on top, because we need that right here at the last. Just keep stretching it, rolling it around, sort of like you're forming a mushroom, but just keep pulling it towards the bottom. Then we're gonna place it back in that bowl cover it we're going to let it go one more hour and whoo folks look what happens after one more hour i'm talking goodness now it rose like this and nearly pushed the plastic off flour your surface again make sure you got some on everybody take the edge of that bowl and just pull it just a tad and it ought to dump right out of there well what do you think there? I think it's mighty pretty, I do. Now I'm gonna show you a little hip or a trick or whatever. Before we cut that into four equal pieces, I need you to grease your cutting device. And I just want you to slice it down through here. Turn it around here and slice it again. And you can see as it sort of spreads apart there, it is growing. It'll continue to grow a little. Now. If you want, at this point, you can cover it with this bowl. This is just a trick I'm gonna show you. And you can let it set for a little while. It'll even get bigger. I'm gonna put these other two in a baggie and I'm gonna put them in the refrigerator. Now, when you refrigerate this stuff and you get ready to use it again, you need to bring it out and let it come to room temperature before you go to kneading it and working it again. So I just need you to go to mashing and just try to mash to where you're getting in a circle. Now you can use a rolling pin, but all them true pizza people will be throwing it up in the air now, but they don't do that in Oklahoma. You know why? We had to catch it and it'll be gone. We won't know where it's at. So we're gonna fold this over. We're gonna grease our Dutch oven really well, come up the sides, bottom, everywhere. And then I just want you to pick your dough up ever so gingerly, fold it back over, maneuver your crust around without tearing the bottom up. Hey. We ain't using none of that Hunt's tomato can stuff, neither. We're gonna make our own, because that's what you do when you're making homemade pizza. Well, look here what it say. Stewed tomatoes. Hey, and they got some juice in them. I want you to drain about half of that off there. I want you just to mash them maters up. And you can see we're still a little soupy, but we're gonna run it through a screen here in a minute and get some of that out of there. Well, you can see I run that through the colander there and got most of that juice out of there, but when you mash it up again, you see that consistency that we're after. But remember when we did that there, I don't know what video it was that tacos. we used us. Yes, it was the tacos, Shan. And we talked about that whole oregano. I just want you to put some of it out here. Just crumble it up in your hand. To me, folks, when you use this like this, it has so much more flavor that it's gonna bring out than the regular powder that you just buy in there. But after that, we I gonna, can smell it from here. Oh, it is good. After that, we're gonna use a little garlic powder, a little salt, a little black pepper. You see me, I done made that homemade sauce, spread it on there pretty thin. That's the way she requested. And we'd be using this, some fresh mozzarella usually, but guess what? Our little store didn't have none, but guess what substitutes really well for it? Queso fresco, mm, gonna be so good. And then one of her favorite herbies out of the garden there at home we done pulled and brought with us, some fresh basil. And whew, don't it make a pretty picture? 
let's get it covered up and move on to the main star of the attraction of this pizza outfit and that is mine the meat lovers pizza took me some mozzarella that i had grated and then just roll that crust back over and crimp it back to that bottom then you didn't see no tomato sauce or nothing here folks you seen the real stuff the relish yes you did makes one of the greatest pizza bases i've ever known to mankind it does then a layer of cheese then we're going to put some pepperoni in there some ham on top of that some more cheese you see me brown up some ground beef and some sausage put that back in there more cheese more cheese and then some fresh parmesan right there on top and some onion now if you be doing this in the house i need you to preheat that oven to 500 yep you heard me 500 and i would like for you to put it in a cast iron skillet like a 12 inch if you're going to do it but you can do it on a pizza stone but folks it takes about 10 to 11 minutes at 500 it's going to give you that good crispy crust on the bottom everything going to brown up it is a quick fix so get that oven preheated i'm finna cook these in a dutch oven you know cooking these pizzas is really a good deal for beginners because it's pretty easy to cook what you're actually doing is just browning all that cheese and getting it good and melted and then we're just crisping that crust up from the bottom crust crust there we go but you can actually see when that top is done you can remove your heat and then also guess what you can take a fork and peel that edge up there on the bottom after it sets a little and see how you're progressing now i'm going to show you two different styles one with a trivet which we sell on our website and there'll be a place that you can find them interchangeable legs either tall or short and i prefer a trivet especially when the wind's blowing but I have cooked them when you ain't got no trivet and all you do is widen your cold circle out at the bottom and you're a little lighter. Now, loaded the top up heavy on both of them we did. We will have to rotate a little cause we got some breeze going, but it won't take that long to cook the top and we'll keep an eye on that bottom with the fork and pull it up. But usually when the top of that crust is set and you push on it, you know that bottom is near done. Hey folks, it is a done deal it is. Looky there, I used to work at Domino's, Pizza Hut, Mario Brothers, Hunt's Pizza. I'm not gonna take the first bite today because this is in your honor, what you call a margarita pizza. Why, I do not know. She took two bites, oh. now she going for the third one. Oh, it's good with that Look at that. fresco. It's Look how right. much of that is gone, <laughs> Shannon. <Shem. laughs> Gosh. A lot of flavor. Uh-huh, what Classic about that crust? Italian flavors. And that and crust, that crisp, Ooh, it is so good. I'm gonna have a bite of mine. You can see that relish layer right there on the bottom. Mm -mm -mm. Come on, Duger. Come on. Any tail wags? for tail wags huh Duke's you're the cheese expert you are we hope you enjoyed this because hey we sure did pizza is one of shan's favorite as long as duke has some cheese on his he's in pretty good shape he is and folks we appreciate you stopping by camp we never take it for granted that you watch our videos and hey with all that's going on in the world today this is a great place to stop by and visit just relieves all your stress and tension and we learned to cook some pizza we did share with all your friends and neighbors I'd like to tip my hat to all our service men and women and all the veterans who are keeping this country safe. That old flag of flying, we appreciate you, we do. To all y'all, hey, new viewers, old viewers, everybody that's joined in, we're so glad to have you. Me and Shannon consider you family. Thank each and every one of you for stopping by camp. God bless you, and I'll see you down the stuffed crust, easy pizza, margarita pizza tree. You know, it's really good when one of your helpers down there chasing frogs and the other is in the kitchen here soaking up the last little bit of shade he is. 
Here we go. As your producer, I feel like I should tell you there's flour on your nose. Well, they always told me a good cook wear what he's cooking. It's still on there.